Aspen Tower says the 59167, uh, ready to Monarch for taxi, runway 33, IFR to Los Angeles. Hey John, what are you going to do in L.A. this time? Oh, they got me out to Hollywood. I'm going to do another television show. Hey, that's far John tonight, guest star Danny Kay, and a special appearance by Captain Jacques Cousteau. In an evening with John Denver. Modesty forbid, but we've got a great one for you tonight. We've got a lot of good music, 
We have some film that we took a few weeks ago with Captain Jacques Cousteau on his ship, the Calypso, down in the Caribbean. And we have, as my special guest, one of the greatest entertainers in the world, Mr. Danny Kaye. So... John Denver is brought to you by... Saturday night in Toledo, Ohio It's like being nowhere at all All through the day how the hours rush by You sit in the park and you watch the grass die but after the sunset, the dusk and the twilight, when shadows of night start to fall, they roll back the sidewalks precisely at ten, and people who live there are not seen again. Just two lonely truckers from Great Falls, Montana, and a salesman from places unknown says unknown. Right. <laughs> All huddled together in downtown Toledo to spend their big night all alone. You ask how I know of Toledo, Ohio. Well, I spent a week there one day. They've got entertainment to dazzle your eyes. Go visit the bakery and watch the buns rise. <laughs> Oh, but let's not forget that the folks of Toledo unselfishly gave us the scale. No springs, honest weight, that's the promise they made. So smile and be thankful next time you get away. And with and wet will, let this be our motto. Let's let the sleeping dogs lie, being dogs lie. <laughs> <laughs> and here's to the dogs of Toledo, Ohio. Ladies, we bid you goodbye. favorite songs in the whole world you know i i love to sing that song because it makes people laugh but i've gotten into trouble with that song before in fact some of you folks i might have told this to before and, and if not uh, i i want to refresh your memory see i did a concert a couple years ago in in cleveland ohio big mistake on my part uh, <laughs> there were some people there who uh who came over from toledo to see if i would dare do that song in their home area, right? And of course I dared. Man, I couldn't possibly pass up the chance to do it there. And we had, now, the audience loved it. The audience that night absolutely loved it. But after the show, these three people that had driven over from Toledo <laughs> came backstage to tell me in no uncertain terms that they were uh, kind of offended by the song. And I, I, now, I didn't mean to offend anybody with that song. I think it's a very funny song. I think it's, it's very well written. It's basically true. And I didn't want to... I didn't want to offend anybody. They were upset. And as I say, they told me in no uncertain terms. They actually bruised me up a little bit. Three of the biggest girls I've ever seen. So then, a year ago, I did a concert in Toledo. And I don't mind telling you, I was a little nervous about going to Toledo. But when I got, they welcomed me with open arms. I mean, I had a press conference. The mayor of the city gave me the key to the city, the chamber. of Everybody was there. They really wanted to show me a good time. They took me by the fire station. I met all the guys. <laughs> After the concert that night, they showed me the bakery. And it, 
Well, we had a great evening, you know, and I'm happy to say that we're all friends now in, uh, in Toledo, you see, except for those, uh, those three girls. Uh, see, I've now, it's okay with me, because I've, I've been in trouble with women before. And... Now, wait a minute, wait, it's not what you think. I, I wrote a song about, uh, I'll do the song for you. I like to deal with the ladies. I like to give them a real hard time. Like to make them sigh. Like to make them cry over me. I like to swing with the good times. I like to have me a real live ball. Doing what I can like a dirty old man. Tee hee. <laughs> like to have them just to hang it around. Wondering where I've been. I like to see him with the big brown eyes Just drinking me in yeah. I like to deal with the ladies I like to hang them up on my line Like to make them sock Like to make them cry over Like to make them fall Like to make them crawl over Treat them kind of rough But they never get enough of me I know that you know that that's not how I feel. <laughs> but there are a lot of guys, you know, who like to come on real strong, real, you know, the, a, you know, the Mako thing. <laughs> but I'm not me. I mean, do I look Mako with this hair and these glasses? Not a chance. Not a chance. But now what I'm doing, see, I've got a song that I think is going to take care of the whole problem. A song with a message but totally positive, totally acceptable, I think. And I would like to do for you, and I don't mind telling you that I'm very pleased to have the opportunity of doing this particular song for the very first time on national television or anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, the ballad of Gerald Ford. I'll sing you a song of Gerald R. Ford <laughs> And all the things he's done <laughs> that, that is not a political statement Far be it from me to get controversial on this show. Besides, anybody who has a son working in the National Park Service is okay in my book. <laughs> Speaking of the parks, forests, and mountains, here's a song. Why don't you sing the choruses with me? As the storm across the valley, clouds are rolling in. Afternoon is heavy on your shoulder. As a truck out on the four lane, mile or more away, whining of his wheels just makes it colder. He's an hour away from riding on your prayer.
things the neighbors say. And your mother called last Friday. Sunshine made her cry. You felt the baby blue just yesterday. Spending time with you It's the little things That make a house a home Like a fire softly burning Supper on the stove a tuxedo in my life on one hand but the thing is I wanted to wear one tonight because this is kind of a very special occasion to me this next part of the show and I wanted to dress accordingly my special guest as I mentioned earlier is Danny Kay and over the past week or so that we've been working on the show and then I've had the chance of getting to know him I, I just have felt like a sponge you know I want to soak everything up because there's so much there that there's so much that's a part of the, of the guy he is one of the greatest entertainers in the world. He, he, he's a jet pilot. He conducts symphony orchestras. He's a master chef. And he's just a beautiful, beautiful human being. And I want you to know and I want him to know that I consider it an honor to have this opportunity to share the stage with him. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Danny Kay. Listen, you. you may not know this, ladies and gentlemen. I can count the times that I've had a tuxedo on in my life on one hand. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I've got my guitar here. I'm well, going to sing a little bit. Yeah. Good, good, good. I, really, I, haven't, I haven't been around television very much because, as you said, I've been traveling a lot for you and uh. carrying on and all. They're singing your songs 
all over the world. Everywhere that I went to, they're singing your song. I didn't know that. Really. I didn't know that. Well, I <laughs> Yeah. Well, a lot of places. Let's see. A few weeks ago, I was down in the Caribbean, and they would. Do, what, what's that song? Uh, leaving on a jet plane. Huh? I'm leaving on a jet plane. Well, that's a song. Oh yeah, but they do it a little bit differently down in the Caribbean. It is just absolutely marvelous. My box they packed, I'm ready to go. I'm standing here outside your door. I hate to wake you up to say goodbye. Isn't that right? That's great. They want to do that with me? Yeah. Here we go. My bags of... No, not bags, John. Bugs. My bugs they packed. All right? <clears throat> My bugs they... No, no, not bugs, John. It's not bugs. Bugs. B-O-G-G-G-G-S. Bugs. Okay? I got it. He got it. He got it. <laughs> I've worn a tuxedo in three <laughs> years. <laughs> My bugs are bugs. I'm ready to go. I'm standing here outside your door. I hate to wake you up to say goodbye. So kiss me and smile for me. Tell me that you'll wait for me. Hold me like you'll never let me go. I think we just missed the connection. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. No, no. <laughs> On my shoulder makes me happy. That's the one I'm <laughs> In my eyes can make me cry. Sunshine on the water looks so lovely. Almost always makes me hard. Isn't like that pretty? Yeah, yeah. I'm crazy what, about what that you... song. I'll tell you what they do with that. They sing this song somewhere, not quite that way. But they have a marvelous little tempo in blighty old England. They sing it absolutely beautiful. Here it goes like that. Come on. Sunshine on me shoulders makes me happy. Sunshine in the eyes can make me cry. Sunshine on the water looks so lovely. Sunshine almost always makes me eye. If I had a day that I could give you die, I'd give to you a day that's like a day. If I had a song that I could sing to you, I'd sing a song to make you feel the way.
What's the great song, City Streets? Country Roads. That's the one. Ah, I got it. Country Roads, take me home to the place. Do that again, you see, Lenny. Rosnoshi Zvedet, Gospodin. Prusnoyes is myes mas gracias nojets jan denga dochindo. Prusnoyes globat country road. Dvanovich. Oh. 
part of the show that I told you about earlier, and it's one of the things that I really love about doing television. I mean, how else could a guy like me get the chance to go down to the Caribbean and meet somebody like Captain Jacques Cousteau on the Calypso and actually go out with them on one of their expeditions? And it's just, it was, it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. I, I joined the Calypso in Belize in Central America, and what a far out boat. Now here we are going out to board the Calypso. It's Captain Cousteau and his red, <laughs> red cap. Oh, no. Welcome on board Calypso and uh, let me show you around. Now, as we headed for Glover Reef where they're doing research, Captain Cousteau told me what to expect in our dive. And, and what, a, what a thrill it was just to be with this man. Uh, he's 64 years old and his sense of humor is, is beautiful. No sharks? Yes, sharks. Sure. Nurse sharks. What kind of a shark is that? Uh, they're, they're relatively harmless shark. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> That's my kind of shark. <laughs> so here we're getting ready. They're, uh, they've got me equipped, and I think they were a little nervous about me going diving. You know, I'm not a certified diver or anything. Now, Captain Cousteau was one of the co-inventors of the Aqualung, and here I am about to have the opportunity of going down into the silent world with this man and then you go a little further wow not too excited you know <laughs> now these goggles here you'll be able to see in a minute uh every time i've gone skin diving before i've had to wear just you know ordinary goggles and without my glasses i'm blind so we were able to get some lenses made and glued to the inside of the goggle lens and for the first time now i'm going to be able to go into the water and and really see the things that are down there and I'm thrilled to death. Bye. <laughs> the club that I have in my hand is a knife in one end, and the other end is a bunch of nails driven in. And they said, you know, if you see sharks, you just kind of use that to nudge them away from you. Just take it easy and keep them away from you, and they'll leave you alone. Ha, ha, ha. Now, here's the captain taking me by the hand and giving me a guided tour through his silent world. Now, we're coming upon a, a basket sponge here, which is... Uh, really beautiful and you kind of get a sense of the color but it's a basket uh, there's one point where I got inside it and sat down in it this is an angel fish now you guys seen angel fish in your aquariums at home about that big look at the size of that fella he's about 30 inches in diameter far out 
up, is what I was saying. At one point, I got water in my mask. It was amazing. And then, uh, oh, this, but now this is a barracuda. And uh, I didn't know that at the time. I found out later. But at one point, I'm watching this fish, see, and he opened his mouth, and half of that fish is mouth. <laughs> now, we stayed down about 40 minutes in a little over 100 feet of water, and Captain Cousteau made sure that I took my time coming up just to be really, really safe. Tell me that down there. <laughs> but did you see the two large fish? Yes. That's where, that's where we are. We are almost fishing. Yes. It's big angel fish. Angel fish. Enormous. They were gigantic about that big around. Yeah, huh? in the call while we were fishing them. Yeah. Oh, and the colors. I've never seen colors like that. Okay. Ah. And a barracuda, huh? A barracuda. But no shell. No shark. Oh, well. Uh, hey, sirrah. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, sirrah. It was great. Now, here we are in one of the Zodiacs, and we're going to a little island here that's uh, along the reef, and Captain Cousteau was telling me they're studying the, the day life and the night life of the Barrier Reef, and it's going to be one of their specials. And one of the things that they found out in this particular trip is that the people who live on the coast of uh, Belize to make a living are fishing for the, the conch shell, or conch as Captain Cousteau calls it, which is a, a large shellfish. And the, the conch to survive eats starfish. Now the starfish to survive eat the coral or the little animals that make up the coral reef. Now because all the conch are being fished off, the starfish are flourishing and uh, well, the reef is going to be destroyed. Uh, this starfish has a huge goal out of proportions and destroy other species. So it's a chain reaction of destruction that we are initiating if we're not extremely careful, if we not know no better. But how do you want, how do you want to stop it when all these people are pushing to the sea because their population is growing, they have to feed their children, and, and, and they fish anything. It's, a, it's for them a matter of life and death. Now we know that the sea is overfished that it is going down the drain because of overfishing, mechanical distractions, pollution, etc. People are very concerned now because we know that if we destroy life in the oceans, uh, there is no life on Earth that can uh, survive very long. Yeah. It's, uh, it's all one world. And everything has originated in the sea, and the water cycle is the life cycle. Look at this sensor. That's a great experience for us here with you. Can I tell you, I'm happy to be here, to share and consider this time, for I see here the shadow. The last evening that we were on board, we did a little concert on the, on deck of the Calypso, and Madame Cousteau, who is a fascinating lady, just a beautiful lady, made this punch that I think consisted of about five quarts of rum and one pineapple. <laughs> we had a beautiful, beautiful evening. This a long way from this place to Denver. It's a long time to hang the sky. so much and shared so much with me and I wanted to share with them the truth of my life so much of which is in these songs now, a few more glasses of Madame Cousteau's punch and it was one big sing-along
as I was preparing to leave, packing my things in my little cabin, I think every man in the crew came by to, uh, to say goodbye. We made some good friends on that trip, and it was so beautiful. I feel that uh, I'll be welcome back on the Calypso any time, and I look forward to being with and working with Captain Cousteau again. Now, one of the things that Captain Cousteau and I talked about is, and something that I've experienced myself, is the number of letters that we both receive or the times that people have talked to us asking, what can I do and how can I help? And one of the suggestions that I make to those people is support the Cousteau Society. I mean, that's a very positive effort that you can make that's directed toward improving the quality of life for all of the inhabitants of planet Earth. And Captain Cousteau, I thank you for that, sir. I just wanted to take this opportunity to, to thank you for being here. It's been an incredible pleasure. You, you know how I feel. Well, I, I, I feel the same way, and I had a marvelous time, and I was delighted to be here. I really thank was. you, Danny. And you're a marvelous young man. Though the cities start to crumble 
And the towers fall around us The sun is slowly fading And it's colder than the sea It is written from the desert To the mountains they shall lead us By the hand and by the heart They will comfort you and me In their innocence and trusting They will teach us to be free you've enjoyed our show this evening and I thank you very very much for giving us the opportunity to do it you know over the past three specials that we've done having the chance to work with people like Danny Kaye and to meet someone like Jacques Cousteau to work with Doris and Dick Van Dyke and George Goebel it's, it's just been an incredibly thrilling experience for me and the most beautiful part of it has been that I've had the great pleasure of being able to share all of this with you and I thank you very much for that good night folks we'll see you again an evening with John Denver has been brought to you by